Hey, everybody. Uh, I think you should be able to see me. I've got multiple screens going on, but uh, I can kind of see myself over here on the side. So um, super excited to be chatting with you guys today. Um, also excited to uh, kind of chat. Oh, great. Thanks, Shelly. Um, to chat more about uh, WordPress and higher education from a showcase standpoint. Um, so today is going to be a pretty high speed presentation. Um, a little interactive. Um, I'd love to see people raise their hands if they will in the um, in the uh, side area where where we've got a chat. If you can uh, kind of all have a little bit of interactive sections where I'll ask a couple of questions and what other people are doing with WordPress. Um, and generally, this isn't for anybody's ego. This isn't um, specific to trying to um, you know look for something uh, even from from my perspective it's really to, to help everyone network today um, I'd love to see people uh, kind of talk with each other if there's people doing some really great stuff with digital signage and WordPress um, you know let's chat about it let's chat about it either here um, or in slack um, if anybody hasn't signed up uh, definitely sign up for the uh, WP campus slack channel um, get familiar with what other people are doing within higher education um, and get involved. Uh, so I also have uh, my slides uh, for today's talk online uh, for anybody to check out. Um, and that link is actually on the info page uh, for today's talk. Um, and you can check that out. Otherwise, the link is m.tri.be forward slash WP campus. Um, and again, those are, uh, those are for anybody that can't hang out for the whole time today or if you just want to follow along if you're doing other stuff uh, feel free to check that out um, so let's get underway so this is a quick table of contents for anybody that's uh, uh, gonna follow along on uh, on their own time or even check out or download and check out later um, you might be asking yourself how the heck is Travis gonna get through 105 slides in 45 minutes um, I am actually wondering that myself. Um, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> the answer is, uh, while we might not make it through all the slides today, I hope we can, uh, but let's ask each other questions um, in Slack afterwards. There's a channel uh, specifically dedicated for today, um, or hit me up on Twitter, um, and my Twitter handle is just at Travis Tots, or you can, of course, email me. Um, my email is on that first slide as well. It's just Travis at tri.be. So a quick, uh, quick intro, quick information about me. Um, I am a traveler. Uh, in fact, in 2014, my wife and I sold all of our stuff. Uh, we sacrificed a normal life, and we decided to travel the country for the better part of a year uh, in an airstream. It was incredible. Um, if anybody has the opportunity to travel, I say take it. Uh, I'm also a designer um, and a senior web strategist at Modern Tribe. Uh, where I get to help clients navigate cool, unique projects from start to finish. Um, on a daily basis, I get to tackle a lot of UX and design challenges. Um, and actually, a lot of my job nowadays is working with clients at the beginning of a project, uh, talking about requirements and ideas and um, figuring stuff out together in, in a partnership to help build you uh, or build our clients really great successful projects. Um, and a lot of those projects are actually for higher ed organizations. And a little about Tribe. Um, we're a digital agency. Um, we focus on designing and building really neat projects on WordPress. Um, a lot of these projects tend to be focused on helping our clients solve complex problems on WordPress, in fact. Um, and I get to solve these problems and work with uh, some really amazing people. You can see some of them in the background there. Um, and we work with clients all over the world, um, much like our clients, our team is actually distributed. Uh, so I have the privilege of working with people from all over the place. And uh, we really are a culture of happy, helpful, curious, and accountable people. And then once you're here, um, and let me know if you guys actually can't see this video. This is a video playing in my presentation. Um, once a year, we get to do something pretty amazing. We get to travel to a rad location and, uh, and work on cool stuff together. Um, be in the same place, collaborate, and you know, not just experience something exotic and fun and beautiful, but also be able to um, you know, 
meet each other in person and, uh, and collaborate in one place. Um, and I'd love to walk you guys through all these beautiful shots in this video uh, for the rest of the time, but I'd also like to show you guys higher ed stuff. So if you want to check this out, uh, this video is actually on our blog um, and uh, you can find it under Team Trip 2016 and you can check out all the cool stuff that we did last year. Um, here's a few of our clients real quick. You can see this is uh, just a quick snapshot of people that we work with. Um, higher ed clients, Fortune 500 clients, startups, uh, government institutions, service agencies, stuff like that. We work with a little bit of everybody. So let's get underway. Uh, I'm glad you guys are here. Um, I'm glad I'm here. Uh, I'm actually happy uh, to be joining you guys to talk about all the cool stuff that, that we found uh, within higher education and WordPress. Uh, so we're going to look at the WordPress in the, in, in the wild for higher education, and, and I'm, I'm hoping to catch them all. Uh, to, but spoiler alert, uh, I didn't. Uh, so um, it, in general, academia, uh, in the academia world, knowing what everyone else is doing, I think is kind of half the battle. Um, and I think the more you know, uh, the more opportunities you have to grow and to learn from what other people are doing within your industry. Um, and it's really cool to see what other people are doing. When we chat with our clients, especially in higher education, we've found that that showcasing what other people are doing in your industry is, is actually sometimes the, the easiest way to earn buy-in and, and sign off from, from higher level leadership. Uh, so hopefully you can use this uh, and use some of these examples uh, that we're looking at today um, if you're trying to tackle a, a new project within your organization. Um, or on the, on the flip side, if you're trying to help a client find a means to find buy-off internally, this hopefully will be a resource for you. Uh, so Shane uh, Perlman and I, the CEO of Tribe, put this thing together. And we had a series of sources. Uh, last spring, we actually did a large survey with, with WP Campus to uh, survey a lot of higher ed institutions and find out what they're doing. Um, also, a lot of it comes from peers, whether those are peers within your industry um, or peers within my industry. Um, some of the uh, pieces of work you'll, we'll go through today are actually tried projects. We like to brag a little bit too. We like to talk about cool stuff that we're doing. Um, and of course, hopefully that helps you guys. And then what Shane and I termed Google Jitsu, um, which is just a series of <laughs> pretty uh, unique ways to find uh, higher ed institutions using WordPress. Uh, so we got lost in the internet for nearly a week doing this research. Um, I was really overwhelmed with a lot of gorgeous examples. Um, but that being said, we obviously don't know how to find everything and we didn't find everything. So, um, so if you've got something to share, I'd love to see it. I'd love to check it out in the chat um, or in the Slack channel. Um, it's wordcampus.slack. Um, and join the WPC online channel for additional data afterwards. Um, or feel free to shoot me uh, a link on Twitter. Um, and that's my Twitter handle. I'd love to see what other people are doing, even since last time we, uh, we put all this stuff together. So without further ado, um, let's, let's get down to business. So um, when it comes to main properties um, and, and finding all of the successes that WordPress has brought to higher education, we, we did a lot of digging. And 77% uh, roughly, or, or three-fourths of, of, of the respondents had actually just launched new sites or were in the progress of a redesign uh, during our survey last year, which is, which is really pretty cool. Um, and 40% of those respondents use WordPress on their primary domain, um, which is actually pretty impressive. Um, their main flagship.edu domain. Um, and in fact, that's probably even increased since the last time we did this. So if there's, if there's anybody else that either I don't cover today that's using WordPress on their main domain, or if you're new to the WP Campus uh, environment, or if you'd love to share, please post a link to, uh, to your uh, flagship site or your EDU site in, in the chat. I'd love to check it out. 
So that being said, uh, let's start looking at examples. Let's start showcasing what WordPress is doing. So these are a series of examples of WordPress being used for uh, main flagship domains for EDU institutions. Um, this is a public university using WordPress uh, for their primary domain, University of Maine. Uh, private college using WordPress on their main domain. Lafayette College in Pennsylvania, beautiful site. Professional schools are using WordPress on their main domain. This is UF, UCF Medical School. Other professional schools are using WordPress on their main domains. This is the UC Berkeley Law School. Um, in fact, uh, we at Tribe have actually designed some really awesome law school sites, and I'll actually showcase some of that stuff later on today. Um, community colleges. This is Walla Walla in Washington State, another great site. Trade schools are using WordPress on their flagship domain. This is the Institute of American Indian Arts in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Great site, gorgeous site, wonderful use of colors. And they're using it on their main 54% of our respondents uh, on our survey are using, we're using WordPress for departments, schools, and organizations within, uh, within their larger organization. So let's take a look at some of those. Temple University, this is their Japan campus site. This is a subsite, so a secondary site within their uh, network. And it's using uh, multi-language capability. I mean, just to give you an idea, WordPress really allows uh, a great way to approach multilingual within any environment. Google Translate, Multilingual Press, Polylang, WPML are some of the top approaches. Um, and they do a really great job, and it makes it really easy. Um, and 29% 20, of our respondents to the survey reported that they were using uh, multilingual support on their WordPress install. And that was across the board, not just secondary sites or uh, main sites or subsites. That was across the board. Department sites as a secondary site. This is VCU Arts, another gorgeous site. USC Housing. Offices are using WordPress as their, uh, as their core. Boston University IT. New College of Florida program site is using WordPress um, in a secondary subsite. Center for European Studies, another center using WordPress. Princeton University is using it for physical spaces. This is the Lewis Center for Arts on campus. So this is a, a building, specifically building campus that's allowing uh, them to show events and what's com coming up and what's being held at the Lewis Center for Arts. It's a great example of WordPress being used for uh, physical spaces. Sacramento State's using WordPress for their student association. And the number one reported use of WordPress was for microsites and specialty sites. And that was just under 60% of our respondents. Uh, we're using WordPress for microsites and specialty sites. So this is actually a microsite that we built at Modern Tribe for Stanford. Um, they're celebrating 125 years, and we built uh, a little subsite um, microsite that allows them to showcase the 125th anniversary. Um, great examples of, of microsites and being used in different milestones and cultural campaigns and special events and fundraising opportunities and key targeted landing pages for marketing purposes. WordPress is really great at that. We found, uh, <laughs> thank you, JB, definitely award-winning. Um, it's a great example. And again, these, these are the type of things that WordPress is really great at. And it's, it also allows us um, or anyone creating and building a WordPress site, a pretty easy uh, and, and low barrier of entry to create a, a gorgeous site um, as a microsite. And nearly a third of all respondents run uh, sites which require thoughtful scaling. 
Um, and just to give you an idea, I wanted to touch on some percentages. And it's a lot of sites. Um, so 32% of our respondents were running 100 sites. 7.2% were running 1,000 sites. And 1.5% of our respondents were using WordPress for 10,000 sites within their network. Um, and again, I think this, this actually does a great job of showcasing WordPress at scale. And also a lot of visitors, a lot of people are visiting these sites, you guys. And of course, it's not just the power of WordPress that's allowing us uh, this capability. It's, of course, hosting environments um, and the ability to showcase WordPress at scale. Um, so just to give you an idea, 30.9% were hitting 100K plus unique a month. 15.5% were hitting 1 million plus unique a month. And just about 5% of our respondents were hitting 10 million plus unique a month. That's a lot of traffic. Um, and it's really great. It's really great to see WordPress not just used as a news site. Um, and not just used as something for blogging um, or posting news articles, but actually being used in different ways in different organizations um, at scale. So WordPress can do it. I think this is a great way to showcase anybody uh, on your team that's, that you're trying to get buy off um, on a new project to show them, excuse me, the opportunity that, that WordPress will bring to you as an organization to have thoughtful scaling. And of course, this is something you collaborate with any host on, uh, but the capability is definitely there. So what else? Let's, let's go back to, to WordPress roots, right? Media. Let's talk about seminal publications and blogs as an opportunity within the WordPress uh, environment and WordPress showcase for higher ed. So it's a little interesting, but only 18% of our respondents reported using WordPress for academic publications and magazines. Shane and I actually thought that was pretty crazy. Um, just to give you a, just to, just to kind of ask you guys a question, if you're, if you're not using WordPress for something like this on campus, like, like an alumni magazine or a law journal, journal or something like that, what are you, uh, what are you using instead? And I would love to hear uh, any thoughts or, or posts about what you're actually using instead of WordPress for stuff like this? And a link, that'd be awesome. Uh, here's an example of something we designed and built for Columbia Law School um, for the law review site. It's a very simple approach, uh, but what it is, is it allows them to post uh, law, uh, law journal issues, um, and then it allows them to add fit footnotes to them. It's a pretty neat little setup. It's also being used within this uh, seminal publication world for long form stories and reports. This is something we designed and built for MIT, um, actually uh, nearly four or five years ago. This was kind of at the dawn of, uh, of long form story building becoming a, a really popular approach to showcase same stories. And this allowed a lot of, of great opportunities, so us to showcase table of contents, multiple chapters. We also designed a PDF auto generation tool within this, uh, within this environment. Custom charts and graphs, pretty neat. Alumni magazines as well. This is San Jose State using WordPress as their alumni magazine. Another uh, piece that we designed for Harvard, this is, a, this is a trade magazine for Harvard Law Today. Topical curations as well. This is Washington University in St. Louis, which showcases entrepreneurship and innovation uh, events actually happening on and around campus. Um, and it's all topical, it's all very curated to be that specific thing. So 46% of our respondents power their primary news site on WordPress, their news sites, so blogs and news sites. Um, a quick example, one quick example of this is the University of St. Thomas, actually here in Minnesota, using WordPress to power their newsroom. 
and 38% of respondents host 500 plus student and staff blogs and portfolio sites on WordPress. That's pretty huge. Um, I think it's showcasing the opportunity that WordPress brings to the table to have very large multi-network sites. So here's a couple, a couple of examples. This is NYU's blog network. It supports over 3,600 blogs and nearly 1,200 user accounts on a single instance of, of a WordPress multi-site. And it's a really nice example if you guys want to sign up or check out what the creation kind of flow is, as well as seeing uh, the type of sites that actually are created within this multi-site network. University of Mary Washington is actually using WordPress uh, for a huge multi-site network that's over 10,000 blogs and sites and nearly 1,300, 13,000, sorry, user accounts on a single instance of WordPress. Large WordPress sites. A VCU supporting over 16,000 blogs and 17,000 user accounts on a WordPress multi-site. And they were expecting about 8,000 more sites to come online before the end of 2016. So the network sites are getting really big um, and, and really pretty powerful. And again, that shows the, the opportunity that you have with WordPress at scale too. Staff and office blogs, this is University of Illinois. A couple examples of e-portfolios, um, e-portfolio networks as well. Um, this is VCU's e-portfolio setup. So you can kind of see the different approaches that students actually have within this uh, multi-site network. Um, this is just an example of, of two different sites within that network. Um, and they both look very custom. They look like a student created um, their own site within this network, which is really pretty, pretty cool to see. Um, the City University of New York, the ePortfolios, which was launched in spring of 2008, and it currently hosts almost 5,000 sites. And the CUNY network of blogs as well at Birch is about 24,000 sites. Um, this is all powered by a large WordPress multi-site network. And sometimes they're not necessarily what you expect. Um, and I'm showing this example. This is a, another tribe example. Um, but it actually showcases really well what you can create from the admin panel side of things as well. So we created this for Conroe School District in Texas. And this actually showcases a, a way that we set up for our end client to be able to approve custom configurations from different school districts within their network, as well as pull in a centralized uh, general style sheet from our, from our centralized theme. So and here's a quick uh, information based on those uh, multi-site networks. 36% uh, were using a single multi-site instance. So a lot of people use multi-site inst instances for uh, their main properties, which allow them to create different departments. 25% single sites managed independently. And 21% single sites using centralized deployment. Um, so something that you're, you know, maybe putting out from, uh, from the main domain and pushing out uh, to different sites within, uh, within their network. So what else are people doing within this timely, uh, with timely content? And it's pretty cool to see, right? So here's Boston University's uh, newsletter. This is, uh, this is an automatically generated daily newsletter. It's a WordPress theme that's with a series of queries and it pushes out automatically to daily, daily newsletter. Knowledge bases and wikis are also pop possible within WordPress. This is the University of North Florida. We've got almost 400 articles on this uh, knowledge base uh, for their faculty and staff to be able to come in and, and search a knowledge base for different articles or documents um, that are specific to their job or being uh, a part of uh, faculty and staff on campus. Kevin, I'll get to your question for sure um, in a little bit. Uh, streaming opportunities. St. Olaf College in Minnesota is actually using WordPress for streaming and multimedia. 
build some custom media players and video players just to showcase different videos. In galleries, um, galleries actually have some of the highest click through and time spent on site of any content type. I think that's for multiple reasons. Of course, it's an easy medium to, uh, to consume on your phone or tablet or different devices as well, which is pretty neat to see. But this is something that is actually built on uh, Modern Tribe's panel builder, which actually allows our clients to add a gallery panel to any page. And I'll showcase uh, a few examples of, of panel builder in a little bit here. We'll talk about uh, different page builders being used uh, in higher education as well. Um, but this allows our clients to be able to dra drag and drop images um, and create easy galleries. And again, it's a great way to, sh to, uh, to have some pretty, um, pretty great interactive qualities within your, within your site. Uh, so community properties, I mean, I think a, a great way to showcase WordPress in different ways um, is to showcase what WordPress is doing when it comes to community and bringing community together. Based on these community properties, about 62% use WordPress for three plus years. And 26% of respondents actually use WordPress for six to 10 years on their community sites. So here's a couple of examples of different community sites or social uh, network sites within, uh, within WordPress networks. This is Michigan Tech. Uh, they built essentially a social network for families. They built an opportunity for families to get involved with their students and be able to log in online um, and communicate on a daily basis if they wish. And this is Modern Language Association, which um, was actually built with a really neat plugin. It's called Comment Press. And it's called, uh, yeah, Comment Press. And it allows uh, essentially readers to be able to comment paragraph by paragraph or line by line. Um, you actually see it in the, in the iPad screen there on the left. Pretty neat. And this site and the site before were using BuddyPress as their, um, as their tool of, of social networking, if you will. Um, this is an example of forums. This is Sheridan College. Um, and it's a really great example um, because it's a very vanilla build of BB Press, and that's BB Press, not Buddy Press, which is which is a forum solution, uh, and it works really well. Um, her students were very engaged in the solution. Um, it's but as you can see, it's very basic, um, and and what that shows you is that to get something to market, it doesn't necessarily have to be beautiful, um, and not that 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 this example looks bad. It's just very basic. So if this is something you want to try. Um, if you're someone that's operating a department on campus, or if you even have a class that you think would be uh, would be better engaged with a forum type solution, this might be a great way to try it out and test it out. It wouldn't take you that long to get a WordPress install set up um, and, and BB Press set up right out of the box to have something that looks very similar to this. What about site governance too? So what we found was IT manages about 45% of projects. Marketing departments um, essentially manage about 31%. And 24% by department teams. So specific departments are managing their, uh, their projects. And then 28% of respondents have used an agency or freelancer uh, to totally govern their, their projects. Kind of unique to, uh, to check out. Um, here's a couple other examples of uh, different community sites. This is a site at University of Birmingham. Um, and essentially, it's a mentor Q&A system with live chat um, and, and essentially a, a Chinese uh, video system. So they're, they're now over 200 active mentors and over 800 questions answered in just over 12 months. Um, and it's really successful to see WordPress being used in unique ways. And this is, like I said, just a QA session. Ah, that's a good question, Rich. Um, I think the majority of our respondents were US based, yes. Um, I'd have to look at some of the examples. There might have been some people outside of the US. Also, uh, WordPress from a community standpoint allows us to showcase directories. Um, and this is an example that we designed and built for Stanford Law School. 
um, to showcase rich profiles. A lot of faculty members had research and publication and media exposure and other projects that they wanted to showcase. Um, and that caused them to go out and make, uh, make their own sites on their own. Um, but we worked with our, with our clients, actually create a solution um, where they could have a full directory of people on campus and have pretty rich profiles within this directory so that these faculty members um, didn't necessarily have to go out and make their own site. They could link to it from here, but this would be the first, uh, this would be the initial gateway to learning more about any faculty member within the directory. So it's a great way to pull everything in together and hopefully not have too many rogues. So um, let's talk a little bit about events, right? Um, at Modern Tribe, we're pretty jazzed about events. It's kind of our thing. Um, if you don't know, we're uh, the designers and developers behind uh, Events Calendar Pro. Um, so we wanted to ask our, our survey respondents about, about events. 26% uh, of our respondents powered their primary calendars on campus on WordPress. And 53 of those respondents chose a WordPress calendar plugin to do so. And this is apparently a picture of Shane kissing a stepped animal, which is hilarious. 52% um, <laughs> of those respondents uh, that were using a WordPress calendar plugin chose the Events Calendar Pro. Um, and that's, that's our plugin. So um, a shame, shameless pitch. Um, if you're looking for a WordPress calendar solution, you should definitely check out Events Calendar. Um, apparently, hashtag tell your boss. Uh, here's an example of a calendar using WordPress, uh, using Events Calendar Pro uh, from the University of Michigan. This is this is our uh, our plugin in in the wild. Conferences are also using WordPress as a solution. Um, <laughs> the best conference ever, uh, WP Campus is using um, WordPress, of course. Uh, 6% of, of HR departments we found were using WordPress to run job listings. Um, and 11% of respondents manage their intranet using WordPress. So here's a few examples of those. Job board at University of Mary Washington, also using WordPress. We built a custom intranet as well, so intranet solution for Stanford Law School. Um, it allows them to manage, you know, specific documents and links within, uh, within a builder solution. So we've talked a little about main sites and media sites and community properties. Let's go on to course properties. So we found that 10% power their, uh, or display their academic catalog on WordPress. So this is a course catalog at Dawson College. Using WordPress. Um, this is a Stanford Law School course catalog. Um, it's a pretty neat solution. Um, it allows current and historical data of, of course catalog. Um, it allows our users to include uh, uh, exam schedules within their course catalog. Um, and then front end users can live filter by a lot of different criteria, including graduation requirements, um, days and times that the class is being held, units and topics, faculty members that are associated with it, um, and much more. It's pretty neat. Abroad programs. This is a solution we built for the American Field Service. Um, and it allows us to showcase programs very similar to courses in a unique way and it allows them to be able to create different programs and uh, and showcase whether or not there's spots available for study abroad students. So 50% of respondents had used uh, or, or added custom functionality through a theme or plugin um, or used the REST API in WordPress and that's pretty neat to hear. Um, of course you know, we know that a lot of stuff custom happens on WordPress, um, but it's pretty cool to see that um, 
a lot of this custom functionality is happening. So whether or not they're designing it, yeah, right, Stephanie? Uh, it should be higher, right? But we have the opportunity to make WordPress even better than it is out of the box. Um, here's a quick example of, of Curtin University using um, WordPress as a CRM. And it actually integrates directly with Salesforce using Gravity Forms. So this is the type of integrations that I'm talking about. 13% uh, replied uh, that they were using WordPress as a, as a learning management system. And 25% of those respondents chose to use WordPress, to use a specific WordPress LMS plugin for that. Um, this is the University of Michigan uh, LMS section of their site. Um, it's actually powered by LearnDash, um, which, was, which is actually one of the leaders of LMS solutions within, uh, within the industry. Also, recorded classes. This is something um, that is, you know, live streaming um, and allows Stanford eCorner and engineering department to showcase a lot of really great content. And it's a big deal, too, because a lot of this content is just as good as something like TED Talks. According to Google Analytics, they get about 60,000 sessions per month. They've got over 3,000 videos and 20,000 views a week on YouTube. They've got a ton of podcasts here as well. 5,000 views a week on podcasts and almost 900,000 SoundCloud followers on their podcasts. eCorner does rock, JB, for sure. Um, and this is, a, this is a pretty neat example of, of using WordPress um, to uh, bring forth and catalog a lot of really great content. Um, course materials as well. This is a, a quick example of a syllabus from Long Beach State. Let's talk a little bit about commerce options and, and opportunities within WordPress. So 37% of respondents run an e-commerce transaction through their WordPress site. And I could look more, but I couldn't necessarily find them. I couldn't find them all. There was definitely a, a, a silly joke, a, a silly, insert silly Pokemon Go joke, but I actually couldn't find them all. Um, no, no luck with finding like specific uh, examples of WooCommerce being used with higher education. So if you're using something, um, you should definitely sh shoot me a link. I'd love to check it out. Um, whether it's WooCommerce or, uh, or WordPress Commerce or something like that, WP Commerce or something like that, um, I'd love to check it out. So 22% of e-commerce transactions um, were actually for publications and copyright usage based on our uh, respondents. And let's look at a couple unique um, builds of, of commerce-based solutions that are not things like WooCommerce. Um, this is something that we actually built for MIT Sloan um, that's a paywall setup. It's a fully featured custom paywall setup. Uh, includes things like uh, first click for free, free membership with a, with a number of articles per month that you click on, um, and paid with different price points based on digital um, and print subscriptions. Uh, we also had integration with library uh, subscriptions on campus, um, and, uh, and pretty neat overall to show uh, what you can actually build very custom. So WooCommerce, Gravity Forms, and PayPal were definitely the clear winners when it came to uh, when we kind of were figuring out what people were using for their commerce solutions. This is an example of Boise using a PayPal form within Gravity Forms in order for fundraising. You see a lot of this within higher education as well, using um, PayPal integration or some other integration within Gravity Forms for fundraising or donations. 65% uh, of e-commerce transactions were for events based on our respondents. So that's kind of neat. Uh, Des Moines University, as well as the University of Western, uh, of Western States, were using uh, events calendars in order to uh, allow their users to purchase tickets uh, to events. So what about WordPress out of the norm? We've talked a lot about being used in, in you know, main sites and secondary sites and landing sites and 
event situations and things like that. But WordPress is being used at a higher education level and, and unique and new ways as well. So here are those. 5% of our respondents were using WordPress to manage their digital signage on campus. That's pretty neat. Um, this is a digital signage example from uh, Harvard Law School. Um, it's a mixture of news and events being pulled directly from their WordPress site. And this actual display right here is built in WordPress as well, where we're actually pulling uh, different sources from their uh, different websites on campus. 5% of our respondents used WordPress, use the WordPress REST API to power a mobile application as well. This definitely got to happen more. Uh, this is Boston University's mobile app. Um, and this is an example of uh, their mobile app, their student services app specifically, allowing them to uh, look at bus schedules and locations on campus and, uh, and, and different emergency notifications uh, and, and map integrations. It's really pretty neat to see that this is actually powered uh, by WordPress. This data is powered by WordPress. We also see WordPress being used for app distribution. Um, this is an example that we designed and built for Macmillan um, and in order to distribute classroom education and content to students and teachers. And this data gets actually pushed out and distributed to iPad and Android apps. Two percent of our respondents were using WordPress to manage food service on campus as well. Here's a quick example of Case Western, um, which actually uses um, a, a, a solution called uh, Cafe Bon Appetit to manage their on-campus uh, food service. And this is all built on WordPress as well. 9% of respondents were using WordPress for campus match, maps or virtual tours. So here's the University of Washington's virtual uh, map solution, all built on WordPress. It's pretty cool to see that this data is built on WordPress. 9% of respondents were using WordPress for alerts and emergency notification management as well. Um, I would assume that this will continue to grow. I think that there's unique ways that WordPress can push data out. This is actually a screenshot uh, from Harvard University. This is Harvard Law School site that we designed and built of a real bomb threat on Harvard campus. Um, and we took a screenshot of it when it happened. Um, it worked, it pushed out, and, then, and it also pushed out to their digital signage on campus, which you'll see in the little uh, screenshot there on the left. And this is a picture of this bomb threat alert being pushed out to their digital signage. This is all powered by WordPress on campus. What about layout managers, builders, things like that? Well, 57% reported using a builder on at least one of their sites. 39% um, of them reported using ACF or advanced custom fields. 22% were using page builder. 18% were using CMB2. 17% were using visual composer. 16% were using Divi. And 14% were using Carrington Build. So here's a quick example of our page builder tool called Panel Builder being used on Harvard's uh, Harvard Law School site. And just so I can wrap up and we can do some questions, guys, um, just a couple more slides and I'll look through them. But based on our survey, we chose WordPress. A lot of higher education institutions choose WordPress. A lot of agencies choose WordPress. Um, and these are the different reasons why, based in order, that people told us that they chose WordPress. 82% chose it because of ease of use. 71% extensibility and flexibility. 69% because it was open source. 55% because it was uh, of development speed. speed. Um, and 43% because of cost. Again, WordPress is really doing a great job of replacing um, some of those really uh, costly enterprise level solutions or costly proprietary custom man uh, uh, content management solutions because of, uh, of a lot of reasons, but because it is very easy to use and because it is open source.
so I think just to close out, like use this info for good, right? Um, this is there's a lot of information here, um, and of course it's it's just a lot of data, right? But this is important information, and we'd love it if you guys downloaded this presentation or you, or pinged us anytime if you wanted to talk about using WordPress for good and using WordPress uh, and using this data to sell uh, your leadership or people on campus to use WordPress in the future. It's a really great solution, and I think it allows a lot of higher education institutions um, a, a, a really great uh, opportunity and, and ease of use that a lot of other custom content management systems just can't quite get. Um, so real quick, this is the last slide if you want to take a look at it, and then we can definitely do questions. Um, my slides are at that URL. Um, there's more information on the survey that we that we put together with WB Campus last year um, at the second URL. Um, that's a blog post um, that we put together on that survey. Um, and then that bit.ly link on the bottom is actually just a direct link to the Roth survey data. Uh, if anybody's wanting to nerd out about that, which I actually think um, was posted in the room already as well. So, um, but. Thanks so much, guys. I really appreciate you uh, joining me to talk about WordPress and, and showcase some kind of cool stuff that we're doing with WordPress. Um, so let's do uh, let's do some questions. And feel free to just post the questions directly in the chat. Um, and if you have other questions or if you want to ping me directly, you can also tweet me. Um, Rachel, I think I'll stop sharing my screen. You can switch back. Let's see here. Awesome. So you can also hit me up on, let's see, you guys. <laughs> Thanks, Matt CR. You guys can hit me up on Twitter there. Any real questions from uh, from someone that doesn't work at Modern Tribe? Not that I don't like that question, Matt CR. It's a great question. I think, um, let me scroll up here just a second. Looks like Kevin, you had a question. Yep. Did you find the, the um, data about page views? In there. Oh, am I totally missing what these are? Ah. Got it. Let's see. So Kevin, I'm just reading your question below here. Universities tend to want access to the raw data of any survey as well as questioning the survey's design and the motivation for the survey. If you're on a lot of data and numbers, are you going to provide access to the data you use to come up with these? Yeah. Oh, it looks like most of that got answered, right? Yeah, so this was a survey that we did put together in collaboration with WP Campus. Um, and a lot of that, that raw data is out there. Um, you can definitely read the, the blog post about, um, uh, about this as well as um, kind of seeing some of our uh, thoughts and opinions about that data as well as linking to the raw data. So it looks like you found that already, but. Ah, just WordPress use. Um, I mean, I think for a number of reasons. I mean, uh, we put this survey together specifically for uh, Word, WordCamp, uh, WP Campus, and um, an event we were putting on last year in collaboration. So um, it wasn't necessarily supposed to, you know, the purpose of it wasn't just to be biased. Ah, that's a good question, um, Kevin Crafts, about seeing if. Uh, I don't think we actually did include anybody in the survey or include a question in the survey about how many uh, of our users contribute to, to WordPress core. That, but that'd be a great idea. Yeah, great idea for next time, I agree. 
Yeah, I mean, I think that the the, the idea was to try to uh, survey people that were using WordPress and what they were doing with WordPress, right? Um, so, so, you know, Kevin, for sure, I mean, I, I can get the idea of trying to not have a survey be biased. Um, I don't think that was uh, at all any motivation behind this, aside from trying. Oh, I, you know, I don't know. Uh, Shane wrote the description. Did you guys put together a survey at some point? Cool. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to take a look at it, check it out. I mean, I think that the, you know, you're going to get different survey results depending on who you're surveying. I would agree. Again, our survey was was definitely. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think that'd be valuable. Um, different communities, for sure, are going to see different results and different uh, reasons for doing different things. You know, I think that. Uh, within within the WordPress industry, um, there's people doing different things within the Drupal EDU community. I'm sure there's people doing different things as well. But um, yeah, I mean, for sure, you're you're obviously welcome, and you can talk to myself or Shane or Rachel um, about you know either utilizing any questions um, that you know we put together as well as um, any ideas to kind of try to push this forward as well. These were put together last spring. So the idea of trying to push this forward, I think is definitely something that's on uh, top of mind for us. Um, let's see, trying to get back to stuff I haven't covered. Um, great talk, Travis. I was wondering, um, have you or Modern Tribe come across any negative sides of using WordPress in higher education? Um, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, I think there's negative pieces of any concept management system, right? I mean, I think that uh, within higher ed projects that I have ran, um, you know, I haven't run into specific negative side effects or, or uh, pieces of, of WordPress that, that I wouldn't have run into using a different concept management system. Um, not to say that there aren't any negative pieces of WordPress, but I don't think there's anything that I ran into that I wouldn't have run into uh, using a different platform or a different content management system. Um, that being said, I mean, there's negative things I think that, that each one of us run into on a daily basis when you, when you, when you manage a project and you, and you go through uh, leading a project and, and meeting client expectations and putting together things that are uh, that are custom on top of WordPress. Um, you know, I think things that we used to run into quite a bit, um, you know, that uh, based on how we approach uh, applying custom uh, custom integrations and things like that was always, you know, the, the worry about WordPress updates, um, WordPress updates breaking something um, or causing issues. And I think, um, I think we've overcome that quite a bit. Um, we really try to isolate what we do. Um, and a, a lot of our stuff is essentially built um, you know, integrated into our theme as well as integrated in plugins. Um, we're not doing anything that um, is outside of, of uh, WordPress best practices. Yeah, great question though. Um, I'm sure I can think of something though. Uh, I know the showcase talks uh, are all about what you can do with the tool, uh, but have you run across any use cases for uh, WordPress where WordPress definitely should not be used over another tool? Yeah, I mean, that's a good and interesting question. I mean, we're actually using WordPress as we speak as an engine for a mobile app, um, and it's working quite, quite well. Now, that being said, could we use a different tool, and, and would it be easier to build um, you know, a, a data set of sorts outside of WordPress or um, no WordPress integration within a native application? Probably. Um, but I think that um, uh, I think that I haven't yet run into a, a case based on the clients that we work with and based on the, um, on the uh, projects that we that we really like to tackle um, that I haven't run into anything that was specific like no definitely won't use WordPress in this case. 
Um, that being said, that there's there's obviously cases, um, but most of what we do at Tribe is is you know focused on this idea of of complex building complex uh, projects on WordPress and complex infrastructures on WordPress. Um, next question, Creative Cooper. Uh, maybe I missed it, but did the data you collect happen to mention an average of how many plugins WordPress powers? within higher ed sites um, and, and how many they tend to run, huh? Um, that's a good question. I actually don't know if that was included or not. And there was definitely questions. I would look at the raw data and see if you can search it. Let me actually see if I can search it real quick for you too. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing a quick look, but there's um there's a survey PDF that actually has all this data in in graph format as well as the raw data within the spreadsheet. Um, that's also a really good question to try to find out and add to our, our next go around here. Yeah, I I, I agree. Uh, I feel like it did as well, but I'm not finding it off the top of my head. Let's see. Yeah, we'll keep you posted, uh, Craig Cooper. Anything else that I can help answer, guys? I mean, um, there's a lot of information here, um, a lot of survey data results. I'm sure a lot of the stuff has been um, updated, and, and you know, hopefully we can continue to run this survey uh, and find new information. Uh, but Kevin, you should reach out. Um, I'd love to see how we can, you know, collaborate and see if there's a way for. Uh, you know, for us to, you know, collaborate on what you ask to the Drupal EDU community or collaborate and check out what survey results, um, you know, you guys found as well. Um, again, um, I think uh, based on any description, I, you know, again, I didn't write the description. I don't know what Shane was pulling from when he wrote the description. But definitely happy to, uh, to talk about that too. Um, but I think that just about wraps it up. Um, I, I am totally around in Slack, if you guys want to ping me in Slack. Again, there's the WPC online channel where we can talk about uh, different, uh, different questions that anybody has. Um, happy to answer anything via email and Twitter as well.